Hello and welcome to my channel. Zunda Danio Axelrodi, or the Axelrod Raspora, how they call it, but it's not a Raspora, of course. It's more closely related to a Danio. But this is a story that I will tell you a bit later in the video. I want to tell you my story about how I got the fish and what problems I had with the fish, because for me, this fish is some of my favorite nano fish usually i don't talk about my favorite shrimp or my favorite fish but i have to say it took me a long time to keep them successfully because i had a lot of problems with them especially in the beginning because if you find them in the trade uh, and that is very rarely i have rarely see them seen them in a pet shop or on a fair um, and if you find them they are usually in a bad shape or in a not so good shape i could get could get my um, sunda daniel axel rodi from a wholesaler a friend of mine he also um, works for or sells fish for zierfische.de it's a german page so i was really lucky to get this sunda daniel from him and th the point is that a lot of wholesalers when they get them they put them just in normal water and this is not good for them so the thing that he does different is when they arrive he put them straight into black water he takes a, a bunch of katapa leaves put them in a, in a bucket for a, a while until the, until the water is really dark black and then when the sundadanyo come from uh, Indonesia he puts them in this water where the pH is around four to five around five I would say so this is the thing that most of the wholesalers don't do they put them just in normal water and if then they have to cope with different bacteria tribes they usually don't make it and this is a big problem so my friend uh, also puts them in this dark water where they originally come from here you can see it. this is in fact how the habitat water looks like it's very dark and he also does that so in the beginning after all the stress of the transportation they don't have to deal with a lot of bacteria tribes and this is a really good thing and that's why this Sunda Danio Axelrode that I have at the moment they really do well and my little group I have them with five uh, Boraras Micros a small raspora so again of course you can buy your fish in your local fish store that's not a problem with guppies mollies or whatever but with this special genus with sunda danio it's a little bit different it's very important how the wholesaler keeps them and too many water changes don't do them well well once they're established it's not a big problem anymore you know i can make water changes the temperature goes up and down in a certain uh, uh, spectrum and it's not a problem they are tough fish but until they established until that point it could be really difficult so if it comes to nano aquarium i have my group of like 16 17 uh, zunda danio axerodi in a nano aquarium of about 30 liters so that's less than 10 gallons and why i have them in this tank because in this small tank i can control them much better i can check if they have any disease if anything is not okay it's much better than in a bigger aquarium where i will not observe for example the fins if the fins are okay if they have any white spots or whatever so in the small aquarium i control that and every day to see if everything is okay and that's why i keep them in a 30 liter nano tank so what you see here is a picture like that really could be the habitat of uh, the genus Sunda Danio. And here the pH is between 4.5, 5.5 and the water is really dark. What you see here is another species that I have under these conditions because I will transfer them shortly into the clearer water. I just got them also from the same uh, wholesaler that where I have the Sundadanio axelrodi from and this is Sundadanio rubellus it's another species from the genus in the genus we have like eight described species and um, not that many but they all live in this typical black water but here they swim together with the Borara species that is also in the transfer from black water to white water or clear water so my first batch of fish was also a group of like 15 to 20 fish. I got them 
and I really had problems with them in the first uh, two days they had fin rot and I didn't observe it and within two days the whole group has been gone and I just came home and wondered where the fish are I thought they jumped out but they didn't the fin rot got them all and they just disappeared and I was really sad and I promised myself I will do it much better the second time so when I got the second group of fish I was already prepared the weeks before some weeks before I set up a bucket a bigger bucket I put a big handful of catapa leaves in the bucket so the water got dark after a couple of days so then when the fish came they came in black water I got them in a, a bag of black water I added like 20 liters to this 30 liters tank so two-thirds of the water has been black water and I added like one-third of the clear white water and this time I also gave it time to do the, the, the step from the black water to the white water. It took a couple of days, like 10-15 days, slowly but surely I changed the water. And in, in the end I had clear water after roughly two weeks and the fish have been stable. And also in the beginning the feeding is important the wholesaler where i got them from he fed them with uh, freshly hatched artemia and i did the same thing so in the beginning i just gave them artemia freshly hatched and slowly the transfer over a couple of days with nanogram or no flakes if flakes didn't work for me i don't know if you have an experience with flakes and sundadanio but i could see that um, they don't take food that floats on the surface they just take food that floats by and artemia are great for that or other fish foods like uh, smaller granules or something like that that fits them um, and they also don't like the hard food it needs to be really soft and small and this is food that they will eat so like i mentioned before in this genus we have eight species and most of them uh, live in a very similar habitat, uh, peat swamp forests. For example, Sundanaño axelrodi was, was described in the 70s, as far as I remember, 76 or 77. And then in two 2011, we had seven other species described by uh, scientists. So back in the 70s, it was originally described as Rosbora, and that's why axelrods Rosbora. But all of these species have in common that, that they live in these black water habitats, peat swamp forest, where you have a lot of leaves in the water. Usually the sun don't go down to the ground. And like I also said before, um, you can see maybe half a meter into the water and then it's just black. So a reason why I like this fish so much is also because I can keep them with my shrimp, especially with the shrimp babies. My shrimp reproduce in the tank because these fish don't go after the offspring. They also don't go to the surface to pick up food. That's very rarely the case that they pick up food, food from the surface. So you can keep them with shrimp. They're absolutely shrimp safe. So now I want to tell you about my experience with the fin rod and how I dealt with it. When the fish came, of course, I watched them very closely and then after a couple of weeks, I think it was three, four weeks, I saw that some of the fish had these white spots on the fins and part of the fin had been gone already. So I panicked, not, not really panicked, but I reacted immediately. I went to the next store, I got me Bactopur from Sarah and I'm not advertising here for them. I think they have some good stuff, but uh, especially this uh, medication really helped the fish i put it in the tank and after 24 hours i or the first hours the tank has been really green of, of the liquid but after 24 hours the water was clear again and it seems that the fish really handled it well and also after three to four weeks i could see that the fin grew back the fins grew back and the fish have been in a much better shape But also to prevent this and that there's too much bacteria in the tank, I don't add any new fish or shrimp to the tank. I'm very careful with that. But also I do a lot of water change. I do 50% of the water uh, change every week. 
so this is something that also probably prevents from too much bacteria growing so if you are now inspired to keep this genus or the species i'm more than happy put it in the comments let me know what you think about it and thanks for watching and i see you in the next video